This is Dror Moshe Kasuto. Our world is a big mystery. Many of us are working as hard as we can to find answers, to find solutions to our questions, to our doubts, to those huge things above our heads that we cannot understand. How a person that we love can suddenly disappear from our life physically in the middle of our lives. How good people are suffering. How evil people can find themselves succeeding in the world. How horrible things are taking place. And many of us are trying to do the best we can to still fit into the system and to be called believers and still not to lose our hope and to be observant as much as we can and to follow the rules and to cooperate and, and not to express our questions and our doubts in the Creator that are, are attacking us on a daily basis. Everyone are facing challenges and everyone are, are spending their lives in the exile like we all. There is a story about Rabbi Akiva that once Rabbi Akiva went with a bunch of people on a boat, on a, on a ship, on a large ship and there was a storm and the ship drowned and everyone drowned, been killed in that storm. But Rabbi Akiva, only Rabbi Akiva made it to shore. And they asked him, how did you survive? Everyone drowned. He said, I was bending my head to every wave that came. He was able to humble himself to those strong waves and to let them hit him, to let them pass above his head in a way by humbling himself. And by that he was able to cross that huge storm that didn't left no one else except of him alive. The humility that we can use in this lifetime to save ourselves, to heal ourselves, to give us the strength, the power to survive, to go through the difficulties and the challenges is not a high and divine level of Rabbi Akiva. It's something that every person in the world is commanded to, to be humble. Everyone's supposed to, based on his nature, to be humble. Because humility is very much like reality. For an example, an arrogant person will refuse to admit in his mistakes. He will not admit on his failures. He will argue and justify himself from the morning till night. But a humble person will just admit. It's not that the humble person will do something so special. He's just honest to say the truth. Yes, I messed up. Like, yes, I failed. That's the level of that humble person. That he's a man of truth. He's a person of truth. He's just able to say the truth and to confront himself and his fears. And by that he's finding the power to cross all the challenges and all the obstacles in life. Because life is not simple. And we're trying the best that we can. And the main thing that is troubling our minds all the time is the self-hatred and the self-blaming. And all of our inner arguments with ourselves, judging ourselves on the past and not accepting who we are in the present time and doubting our future. And don't give ourselves a chance. If someone is coming to you and tell you, hey, who are you? What do you think you are? You're worthless. You're hopeless. It's, it's not a, such a big deal. When it's a big deal? When you believe him. When you take his word and you start going with those thoughts, oh, I'm hopeless. I don't have a chance. Me, I'm a failure. I messed up so many times. For sure I'm not going to make it. Then your, your life loses the, ta the taste. You lose the, the happiness of, 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 of life. All the sweetness disappear, melts between the fingers. You lost it because that you started to doubt yourself. But if a person will be, like we just said, just a person of truth, be honest with yourself, 
Judge yourself, talk to yourself, confront yourself, put yourself in front of the mirror, to the spotlights, in front of the real truth and, and cold and, and cruel truth of your reality. Remind yourself of an horrible failure that you failed in, in life. For a second, remember the most humiliated moment of your life, something very wrong that you did, that only you know that you've done. Ask yourself, why did I do it? Why did I fail? You're going to find reasons not to justify yourself, not excuses. You're going to find real reasons. You're going to find that you were terrified. You're going to find you, you felt so lonely. You're going to find about yourself that your self-esteem was so low and so broken that you needed someone to give you a compliment, that you desired honor because you were so choked, you were so broken in that hour. You didn't know who you were, you were so lost and confused. And that was the thing that brought you to fail. Your failure is not being justified now. It's not okay that you failed, but you had a certain reason, a certain weakness, a certain link in that chain was weak, and that's why you failed. That's why you fall. And in every situation, an humble person must connect himself to the truth. And in reality, from side of truth, we are not only physical to judge ourselves on our physical failures, on the failures of our bodies, on our luck. There are certain things that are not in our hands. You're also a body, you're also a vehicle, but you're also your soul. And your soul is the main part of your being. That's who you really are. You are your spirit. You are the life inside of you. You're not the one that carries you. You are your spirit. You are your talents. You are your holy desires. You are your hopes. You are your dreams. You are the gifts that you've been blessed with. The treasures that the Creator put inside of you. That's who you really are. But you're afraid to express it. You're afraid to let your feelings be out in the open, that everyone will know what you think, so you hide yourself. But you hide your beauty, and you hide your beauty behind your body, that your body is exactly like the world. The world, the meaning of the, way, of the word world in Hebrew is olam, and it's coming from the word helem means that the, that the nature of creation is to block the light, the heavenly light, the Creator's light. Physical things create shade by blocking the light. Our body is blocking the light of our soul as well. Before the time of creation, in the ancient long days before of time, the world was not exist at all. Only the godliness in completion and unity was exist. There was nothing except of Him. In one moment above time, the Creator decided to create the world and He started to block His light and to create the physical world. Now into the physical world, the Creator sent His own Spirit, a beam of godly light, the soul of creation, life itself, and started to revive it. And everything started to grow, to develop, and, 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 and to show the inner light, but through curtains, through husks, through coverings. And the coverings are showing certain amount of light, but in a measured way that we as people, as humans, will be able to enjoy from. Now the soul of the creation is similar to our soul. And your body is blocking the light of, of, of your spirit. And our mission, like that we have that role in life to reveal godliness, to, to let everyone know that there is a creator and there is a king to this kingship and that's our mission. The real and main way for us to do that is to become people of God. People of God are godly people. It means people that their soul is shining through their bodies. 
Like that you hope godliness will shine the world and that you'll be able to recognize the Creator walking with us like back then in the Garden of Eden. That they could see Him walking, that they could hear His voice, that they could feel His presence. We know that Adam and Eve, they decided to hide in the trunk of the tree because they felt that the Spirit of God is walking in the garden. They immediately been terrified and ran to hide because of the sin. But in reality, back then, in those days, the coverings were not as heavy and thick as today. Today you look at the mirror and you cannot recognize yourself. You look at your own picture and you ask yourself, is that me? Is that reality? That's who I became? That's who I am? I don't remember myself like that. That's not me. What's going on? Was it me that said that thing right now? Was it me that, that, that made that phone call? Like, I, can't, I don't understand. Where am I? Who am I? Even the control on ourselves we lost. Even the connection with our own minds, with our feelings. Did you feel that? No. What do you mean no? Like everyone felt it. No, me no. So disconnected from ourselves. Because of the darkness. Not to blame yourself for that. The Creator turned off the light. The Creator went out from Jerusalem. The Creator Himself broke and destroyed the temple, the first one and the second one. The Creator Himself exiled us and, 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 and sent us away from His house, from His table. We're suffering from thousands of years of the exile and our bodies and our spirits are traumatized from the wars from the bloodsheds, from the fears, from the plagues, from the education that we received, from the knowledge that we purchased through the generations that we were there as different people in different lifetimes, or that the result of what happened and took place in the world affected our parents and we grew up in their houses. And we are the direct result of what had happened even thousands of years ago. If you're going to look with realistic eyes and just demand the truth, you won't find no way to blame yourself for anything that took place in this creation. Because you can only want. And as long as you connect to your soul, you want good things. But when you're disconnected from your own soul, so then you start being scared. And then you start react to your fears to the pressure, and then you lose yourself. When you lose your faith, and which faith is that? The faith in yourself. When you lose your own identity, that's when you fall to your fears, to all the pressure. You don't know who you are, and what you should do, and which do job to take, and what to do with your spare time, and if to get married, or not to get married, to take that place, or not to take that place, to move, not to move, to go, not to go. Why? Don't you know what you want? You're too busy being scared to think, to ask yourself, what in the world do I want from life? What do I want to achieve from life? To ask those questions is to be brave and it's to bring out yourself to the light. Because the Creator gave you your qualities. He treasured those precious stones inside of you, the gifts that you've been blessed with. He gave you those tools if you have an amazing memory, if you know how to make music, if you know how to sing, if you remember books by heart, if you remember movies by heart, if you love the cinema, if you love Torah, if you know how to fix such a beautiful table like that that we can see here in front of our eyes. Not everyone knows how to make a wonderful table like that. Not really. Me? I don't know. <laughs> Never did. <laughs> I have... 41 years of proofs, I never made such a beautiful table like that. My, my wife, she's talented. Me? Not in, that, not in that aspect. Everyone has his thing. And why? For a purpose. There can be a person, me, I was a professional swimmer. I spoke about it yesterday. I was a professional swimmer as a kid and I am swimming very well, thank God. One day I almost lost my son in the Galilee Sea, in the Kinneret. We were together, all the family, and he started to drift away from us. Huge waves, afternoon in the Kinneret, there are sides that are very dangerous. And he was very far away from us already. Thank God it was the Yotzeit of Yosef HaTzadik. And my son named Yosef was that one to drift away. And in that day, he was about to drown. 
And thank God the Creator gave me that education as a kid to learn how to swim. And I was a professional swimmer until I was 15. And there I got those, the, that blessing of knowing how to swim. And then I worked in that profession and I was a lifeguard for a certain period of time, a couple of years in my life. And I was able to catch that distance and to bring him out from the water and to save his life. But if I'm going to start thinking without that situation, oh, you waste so many years, years that you could sit and learn Torah, and you were just swimming miles and miles. We were swimming two, three miles every day, six days a week, like crazy. We were swimming and swimming and swimming. It's a waste of hours. It's not a waste of hours if in the end of the day you find yourself save a life of a person. And I saved few lives of few people with that skill. So... Sometimes you think to yourself, oh, I'm wasting my time. I'm so wrapped after baseball, after basketball. I'm running, I'm jogging, I'm stuck with those earplugs. I'm always hearing this music. Like, why am I doing this? Why am I doing that? Judging and criticizing yourself when in reality, you're just not tuned to the real purpose of why the Creator brought you to the world in that house belong to that family, in that neighborhood, surrounded by those people, with those specific friends, that you'll be traumatized, that you will be hurt, that you will be scarred and wounded. And with those wounds and scars, he built a holy armor around you. He gave you tools for your life mission. Me, I won't be able to deal with your scars and I don't have the tools that you have, but I also don't need them for my mission. I need mine and you need yours because your surroundings, they need you and you can help them. And in your reality, in your neighborhood, in your hometown, in your community, there are things that are connected to you in an amazing and great precise supervision on your life that only someone with godly eyes, someone that is connected to the purpose of our creation, can see and recognize all the time, in every moment. There is no one cell in this creation that is out of place. Everything in this creation is synchronized in a perfect way, in huge and amazing harmony, but we are too deaf to hear, we're too blind to see. We cannot taste it, we cannot feel it, because we, our mind is set and focused on our physicality, but our senses are spiritual. And therefore we cannot understand what's going on in this world. And we have so many questions and so many doubts, but it's coming only because that we don't see the completion of this creation. We don't realize and don't understand what's going on here at all. Because everyone is stuck in his own bubble. Everyone is stuck in his time tunnel. And instead of recognizing and seeing that something much greater than our needs, than our fears is going on here, we're stuck in our selfish place and trapped in our mind and blaming ourselves and hating ourselves. Blaming yourself on a creation that you never created. That it was not in your power to change anything in this world. You can only desire good. You can only hope to achieve good things. Sometimes you try to keep a mitzvah to do something good. I heard once a person, he said, if you do something good, you must be punished for that. It's part of the supervision in this world. You see yourself doing good things and the waves are keep on hitting you in the face. You don't know what's going on. Sometimes you do bad things that looks for you like it's awful that you did it. And you see amazing results coming out. How can it be? The Creator, He knows. And if you want to know as well, you should connect yourself through that channel, inner channel that you hold inside of yourself, that you've been created with. An inner source of life, an endless spring of life that is attaching you to the divine world. 
From inside you can connect yourself to the secret of creation. But from outside, from the physical world, through your eyes, through your mouth, through your senses, through your ears, through your hands, you cannot see the complete picture because your body is limited. I'm here now with you in this room. I cannot be in another room. I'm here, I'm stuck. But my mind can be elsewhere. My voice can go to a further distance because the Creator created the world in a way that spirituality and physicality are blend. They're mixed with each other. And you, we, we have that power to connect ourselves to the truth. And that's the humility. And you should not be scared to admit the truth because the truth will bring you closer to the Creator, means to the source of blessing, and you'll be blessed for saying the truth. Which truth? No divine truth. No secrets of Kabbalah. We're talking about simple truth. To be honest. To be able to express your feelings. Not to be ashamed and scared of who you are. To understand that your body may be failed. That your body may be not able to carry all the weight of this world on your shoulders. But through your spirit you can connect yourself to the life source of all this creation. And through that you can revive the dead. And we can bring a complete redemption to the whole wide world. And it's in our power to make changes in the world in such enormous ways. Every person has something inside of him. And how will you know what your purpose is in life? I'll ask you what your dreams are. That's your purpose. To fulfill your dreams. That your prayers will be answered. That's the mission of your life. What you desire. That is the purpose of your life. What do you want to achieve in life? That's what you need to accomplish. And on that purpose, on that goal that you set for yourself, you need to go with full power like there is nothing in the world exists at all. In the Zohar, in the book of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, it's written, if Am Israel would just know how much the Creator loves them, they would run after Him, chase after Him like lions. Lion is an animal that does not know the concept of fear. If we would just understand how much love, how much endless love, pure love, amazing grace is planted inside the creation, how many talents and abilities and power and blessings are right under our noses, we would run to collect those diamonds. What makes you happy? Money makes you happy? No. Lust, desires makes you happy? No. The spiritual experience of having confidence makes you happy. The pleasure of sitting with friends or knowing that you have someone that cares about you or that you can show your heart to and love him, that is a blessing. This is something that gives you life. To be married, that's not a pleasure. She can become your worst enemy. He can be your, your worst nightmare. nightmare. The marriage is not a blessing. The blessing is the peace between the couple. The blessing is not to have children. You can have a problematic child that will leave scars on, on, on your heart that you won't be able to deal with your reality. That you will cry every morning and going to be terrified every night from thinking about what he might did in those hours that you didn't put your eyes on him. So the kids themselves are not the blessing. To be able to give something good to your child, to see your child growing, the spiritual experiences, those are the experiences that gives us life. So we need to look for that spirit in every situation. There is an amazing table. It can be a picture and you won't be able to touch it and to see and to enjoy from it. There are people that are losing their ability to, to enjoy ta taste. They don't feel no flavors in their mouths. The beauty does not give you the pleasure. Only when you connect yourself to a certain purpose in every situation, in every step of your life, you have meaning for that. You're doing it for a purpose, for a cause. You have a reason to live. Your reason, not my reason. My reason won't make you happy. If you're going to achieve my goals, I'm not sure you'll be satisfied. You have different dreams. 
You dream about something else. The house that I dream of is not the house you dream of. You have your vision, you have your desire. The peace that I desire is not the peace that you desire. Everyone loves something else. Why? Because the Creator put in your heart a unique and special soul that no one else in the world has. No one person in the world is like you. Like that our faces are so different, the fingerprints are so different, our eyeballs, everything is different with us. Our thoughts are different, our spirits are different. And you, for the completion of your mission and just for the simple mission of become a happy person that feels good with himself, for that you must express who you are. Because if not, you spent your life in prison. You just burnt your life being closed and disconnected from all the options that have been offered to you. Because if you like to sing and you're going to be scared to do that. Because if you want to dance and you're not going to allow yourself to do that because of other people. So here you lost the dance and here you lost the song and there your life passed in front of your eyes. And you haven't lived. But when you connect yourself to life you can live eternal life in a temporary world. Every moment can be inspiring. Every lesson will educate you and will feed and, and nurture your soul. You will grow from every life experience. You're going to find meaning and you're going to go to depths that no one else ever earned and achieved before. You're going to reveal things in the world in your area. In the aspects that are connected to you in the angles that belongs to you, in those things that matters to you, you'll be able to fix the world. When we are talking about the completion of the world, on the whole redemption, that all the nations are joining themselves together, and everyone are coming, and animals are friends with, friends with each other, and everyone are happy, no sicknesses anymore, no death, no sorrow, no fears, no evil tea, no bad, no darkness, everything is shining. So every part of creation will be fixed. The ocean will be clean. The rainforest will be healed. The animals will go back to run in their nature. Everything will be perfect. People will have their strength and power. Now, how it will take place? Just a miracle like that, everything will be perfect? I will tell you 100% no. Like that we destroyed the world with the pollution and with our negative way of thinking and with the violence and with all our bad attributes. By fixing ourselves, we're going to heal the world. Means that those people that care about the dolphins, they will fix that section in the world. Those people that live that lo their life with passion and love for the ocean, and today they care about the ocean, they will be the ones to find the solution on how to clean it in the end. It will be their reward. It will be their merit. Because of sacrificing their lives in the present time, like we today, that you work for your living, that you do the best that you can, you will be rewarded for your effort in the time of redemption, all the light will shine. All the merits will be mentioned and count. All the good actions that you did will run to your hands and you'll enjoy them. Like that Moses been chosen to be the leader of our nation only because the Creator saw that that person is going every day to pray for hours on hours on hours and he's not backing off. So the Creator chose him. Only because that he saw that he was a loyal shepherd to his flock, to the animals, to the goats, to the sheep. That he cared about them. That every individual animal was important to him. The Creator saw, look, that person, he has a heart. If he's praying for a redemption, if he's working so hard, I'm just going to give him the blessing of redeeming them. Who else will be the Redeemer? If not that one that really sacrificed his life in the most radical way and went all the way and put all his effort. Who? So those guys that today they care about that green lung, about the rainforest, about animals not to die. Those gonna be the ones to see the beauty of nature coming back to life. 
They're going to be the ones to welcome the animals. They're going to be the ones to pet all and every kind. They're going to be the ones to see the smile, to learn the language of the birds. They will be the ones to communicate with the animals like King Shlomo. They will be the ones to enjoy that blessing because they went in darkness in that path. They were fighting with us that today we don't care and they do. They will gain their reward based on their effort, on how much they are sacrificing. And you should sacrifice where you want to sacrifice. In things that matters to you, you need to work. You're a lawyer. You want to bring justice. No, give up. <laughs> give up. Sorry. Wrong, wrong <laughs> example. Sorry. I'll try something else. You're a doctor. Okay. If you desire something, if you experience in your life some evil, something bent, something crooked, if you see sick people and you feel bad about it, and that's your passion to help, you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, you have, you're a rabbi, you're learning Torah, you love the Torah, everyone will be rewarded based on how much he sacrificed in his life. On who he really was, on how much you cared, how much you cared about your children, how much you cared about your house, how much you cared about your soulmate, how much you cared about the world, how much you cared about the Creator. The truth will be revealed. When the redemption will take place, every single one of us will see the results of our good actions. Today, we see the results of our bad attributes, of our failures. The failure is that you see in front of your eyes, people are wounded, people are dying, people are suffering, losing their assets, losing their houses, being kicked out to the street. Those things that you see with your eyes, those fears are coming to reflect to you, to us, to me, what that I need to fix. That's a life rebuke. But the Creator, He rebukes the ones He loves. He rebukes the ones that he has faith in them that they can fix for the purpose of us to learn, to improve, to take the lesson seriously and to work on our attributes to become better people, to reveal the godliness that is treasured inside of us because you know who you are and you want to be that one, but you're too scared to go all the way with it. But me, I, I freaked out a few years ago and I'm not scared anymore. And I'm just like uh, a rolling stone. No one can stop me. That's it. Like, in it to win it. <laughs> what can you do? When you realize that all this world is an illusion, that all this world is only trying to, to, to pull your mind, to distract your thoughts from the purpose, by smells, offering new smells, new, new colors, new options, people, opinions, roads, ways, neighborhoods, options, financial options. All those things are coming to take you away from finding who you are. Every conversation, every talk, every person is a challenge now. We're not allowed to separate ourselves from the world. We're here to heal the world. We're here to fix those relationships. We're here to show the good attributes that we love, that we are kind, that we have patience, that we care, that we want to help, that we are supportive and sensitive. We need to win in every battle. And only you, only the individual person, we have a, a, a long list of rules, mitzvot. You need to wake up in this hour. You need to know how to do this and that. You must keep Shabbat, eat kosher, put filin, cover your head. All those things, a long, long list of mitzvot. That is a section of the world because the mitzvot are much deeper than you imagine. When the Creator tells you, you're not allowed to lie. So what do you do with that? Not allowed to lie in every moment of your life you're commanded to. When you're commanded to believe in God. So it's not only in synagogue, not only when you hold the Siddur book. It's in every moment of your life you need to be a person of faith. When you are obligated to trust Hashem. When you're obligated not to be scared of no one. Lo taguru mipneish. You're obligated not to be scared of no man, of no person. You're not allowed to be scared of people. Are we keeping those mitzvot? 
but we're obligated. This is a mitzvah midoraita, the Torah, the Bible is commanding you not to be scared of people in the same importance like you are obligated to keep Shabbat and to eat kosher and to put filin and all the rest of Torah mitzvot. It's a mitzvah midoraita and you don't know what is more important. You don't have a clue. What the Creator see is more important. But you need to figure out because only you know exactly when you're lying to yourself and when you're being lazy and when you're hiding. Only you know what your heart desires. Only you know if you're being negative and lazy or that you're being positive and hopeful and supportive. Only you know the truth in every situation because you have that inner sense that can sense about yourself if you're truthful or that you just make a joke out of yourself and choose to lie. But a person that is lying, a person that is lying cannot stand in front of the eyes of the Creator. When you lie, in that moment, lie to yourself. Lie to your partner. Lie to your best friends. Not huge lies that you go and, 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 and steal money from the government. No, talking about lying to yourself. No, yeah, I, I, I want to do that, but you don't. Yeah, okay, let's, let's go. But you don't want to. You're lying to yourself. You let your fears control you. It's like to worship idols. It's like to let Haman or Pharaoh or all the evil leaders of different nations to abuse you and to force you through fear. To take you because you're terrified. You let them lead you to the kingship of darkness, to the awful places of this creation that is compared to hell. And when you do that and you surrender yourself to the power of darkness, in that moment you give that kingship the power, the authority, the strength to block the world from all its light. And no one can see anything. And even you, you cannot recognize yourself anymore. Because you gave the leadership to a king, to a foreign king, to a foreign kingship that now is abusing you. That now is humiliating you and criticizing you and doing everything it can to erase your true identity. For you not to remember who you really are. That you're a child of the Creator. That you are a godly portion from above. That you are a chelek eloka mimal. That you are godly. That your, your soul is so divine and so separated from the physicality of this world. And you can't remember that. Why you can't remember that? Because you let your fears control your life. You let your lusts control your life. And by that you lose your identity. But if you'll confront your fears with no end, and you're going to decide that you're not moving from your inner point of being honest, saying the truth, fighting for justice, being kind, being honest, doing what you dream to do, Developing the systems that you believe that should be developed and established. Being that person that you believe that you should be, can be. Be that one. And go on that mission with no end. And all the heroes and all the righteous ones and all those noble ones that we admire are crazy sick people that went with the truth with no end and risked everything for that cause. To be honest. And Moses was not scared to stand in front of a whole nation that were about to kill him. His people, the ones that he redeemed, wanted to stone him for lies. And he went to fight for them. And he's going, and he's all alone. Separated from his family, his wife Zipporah took their children and went back to the camp of Jethro. And he's going alone to that awful place, Egypt, in that generation to redeem the nation that half of them does not want to be redeemed. 80% of them refused to go out, refused to leave. They wanted to stay over there to suffer in Egypt. They chose it and therefore they stayed and they died. And he's fighting for every individual. And when he takes his people out, he set free also slaves from different nations. And he wants them to join. And we call them today Erev Rav. 
All those people are souls that Moses didn't give up on. He said, no, we suffered with them. They suffered with us when we were slaves in Egypt. So our redemption day will be their redemption day as well. And he's fighting for every individual Jew, non-Jew, from tribes of Israel, from different nations. He couldn't care less. That person, he loves life. He loves animals. He loves all creation. He loves all human beings. He loves the Creator. And he fights for justice. And he protects the weak. And for that, he receives the blessing to be above nature. And nothing can control him. And he can reveal the godliness to the eyes of people. To open the eyes of people for thousands of years later with the verses that he wrote and with the wisdom that he passed to the next generation, with his amazing examples and way of behavior that leaves us shocked and admire him and wants to learn from him and to follow his light. When he went down from Mount Sinai, from talking to the Creator face to face, his face was shining in a way that people couldn't look to his face. Because the light of his soul was greater than the blocking of his physical body. His soul was shining. And that's the power of every individual. Because Moses, it's true, he achieved something special. But it's written on the first man and Eve that their, um, how you call that? Heal. Heal. That, thank you. That the heel of the first man was shinier than the sun. They were so bright. They were shining, illuminated. They were, there was, they were pillars of light. Only the sins, only the crimes, only the lack of faith that we're holding today is blocking us from understanding who we are. You are the children of Adam and Eve. You are from the family of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and the Holy Mothers. From an apple tree, you're never going to see mandarins coming out. Sorry. You're going to see only apples. Even after thousands of years of planting them, they won't change their nature. Maybe they're going to be a little bit weaker. Maybe they're going to be a little bit more pale. But in the end of the day, an apple is an apple. It was an apple 6,000 years ago, and it's an apple today. An apple is a creation. It's an apple. And you, you're a creation. You're a child. It's true. Your memory, our memory, mind memory, is blocked. I don't remember me. Who, who am I? I don't know. You know from which family you are, which branch of which thicker branch connects you to the trunk. Do you know your legacy? Do you really know who you are? You don't have a clue who you are. And especially spiritually that you don't have a clue on the particles of your soul. You don't have no understanding who you are. But the Creator, He knows. Because the Creator, He sees everything. And He knows all the hidden things. And He knows and He can tell you who married with whom. And why they moved from that village and went to that town. And why it happened in that generation. And then later they married another family. And they moved and they went on the boats. And they were merchants. And they've been executed and they ran away and one refugee today is the father of a whole gigantic family and that family doesn't even know their siblings because they're so great and you are his child and you don't know anything about yourself but in reality there is truth maybe we are disconnected from it but there is a realistic truth and to connect ourselves to that it's to connect ourselves to the creator and it's in our power, and that's our true potential to connect ourselves to who we are from within and to go all the way in that investigation to find out who is God, what is our soul all about, what's the mission of our life, what's the purpose of our life, to use our power, to use our talents, to use the gifts that we've been blessed with, for the benefit of all the souls, of all life forms in this creation, to bring back godliness to the light from its exile and darkness. 
May the Creator give us complete faith and trust in ourselves that we're going to recognize who we really are in the nature of our creation. What's the real purpose of our being who we are, who we have been created to be. And may the Creator give the blessing to all of us that all our prayers and requests will be answered in no time in the life of ours and our beloved ones. Amen. Can you hear that song? Thank you so much. The first five years that the Amuna Project organization was live and exist, we were located in Israel. Since the day we moved to the U.S., I must say the analytics are showing that hundreds of thousands of new followers, students, and people around the world are enjoying the content that we are producing. I think that it's time to open a real physical location here in the state of New York and to bring as many people from all around the world to visit and to learn all those very important things that are so needed and required for the development and having a spiritual life for every individual. In a physical location, a blessed and a holy one, we will be able to host people, to sit with them and to learn, to give classes and to pray together. And in that place, in that unique and special place, we will be able to hire more people to work on that, to develop this network, and to reach thousands of new souls every year. Also, we're about to complete another series of booklets, and we have about 20 CDs that are about to be printed. We want to print them and to distribute them all for free. All those dreams, and many more, will take place in reality only by your generous donation. We need your help. We need your support. I need you to put your hand deep into your pocket and to bring every penny that you're able for that noble cause. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.